So the sheer amount of stupid crap that OpenAI's board managed to pull off over the last 40 hours is staggering. And it seems more and more that there wasn't really a plan. There wasn't anything concrete going on. It wasn't some well-planned out, well-orchestrated move that had solid reasoning behind it. They decided to do something rash, didn't inform anyone about it. And when everything started falling apart, they started rushing around in panic and trying to do whatever they could think of to seemingly just erase the $86 billion valuation of OpenAI. And the amount of stuff that they did is still coming out. Here's the latest. OpenAI's board approached Anthropic about merger. So this is Dario Amade. So he was part of OpenAI way back in the day, then decided to branch off, do his own thing. So he's the CEO of the rival to OpenAI, Anthropic. So it seems like they approached him over the weekend. So after they kind of set the train in motion, they approached him and told him, hey, why don't we do a merger with you taking over as the CEO? Now, this would have been a mess since Microsoft is investing in OpenAI. Google and Amazon are investing in Anthropic. Amazon will feature Anthropic as one of their foundational models for their cloud services. Google put a big chunk of cash into Anthropic. So this idea to just like merge the two companies over a weekend, like as fast as possible to try to get a new CEO in, I mean, it just sounds insane. It sounds like somebody just went rogue and aimlessly trying to shoot in all directions. Now, it seems like Anthropic CEO Darius Amade, the has a strong working relationship with the ex-CEO of Twitch, Emmett Shear. And so maybe that's how Emmett Shear got off for the position. Maybe Dario Amade said, hey, I'm not going to do it, but here's somebody that might be able to, that might be a good fit for the position. You know, when Sam Altman was saying how much he loves all the employees at OpenAI, after reading this, I got to say, I kind of, I love him too. So here's what happened uh, Sunday. There has been a nonstop power struggle inside OpenAI since Friday with nearly all employees against the now three-person board that opposes Altman. Employees at the company's San Francisco headquarters refused to attend an emergency all-hands meeting scheduled on Sunday with the new CEO, Emmett Shear, according to a person familiar with the matter who added that they responded to the announcement in OpenAI Slack with a FU emoji. So imagine the board is like running around asking anybody they can think of to come in as CEO to take over. Finally, they get Emma Shear to do it. And like all the employees are now like, no, F you, we're not doing it. We're not coming in to your meeting that he's, they're basically just, just rejecting him as a CEO. They're showing the board how little power they have. They're like, okay, you can say who the next CEO is, but if we don't show up to any of the meetings, if we don't show up for work, then the title is meaningless because it's going to be him speaking to an empty room. Martin Shkreli jumps in. One option for Sam Altman, go to work. Pretend that the board of directors does not exist. Pretend, what's his name? Emmett Shear does not exist. If they show up, just look confused and say, did you hear something? All your colleagues will say, hmm, no, we don't hear anything. Eventually they'll go away. In response, somebody goes, what are they going to do? Arrest him for trespassing in San Francisco, which is spot on. I think the only time when the police has been seen in San Francisco has been called out to do something was when Elon Musk tried to replace the Twitter logo on top of his building with the X logo. Well, that's the only time the police came out as far as I'm aware. But you know, this is meant to be a joke, obviously, but it's almost 100% true at this point. Most of something like 90 plus percent, it's like something like 95% of the OpenAI employees have signed the paper saying we're leaving to Microsoft if you guys don't resign. You know, the new CEO, I don't know if he actually showed up for the emergency all hands meeting or just, you know, realized that nobody else would show up, but they basically rejected him. So at this point, the board has been clearly shown that they have no power. Right, it's kind of like Lord of the Rings. You have no power here. And it seems like a lot of people are mad at Adam D'Angelo. So he's one of the members of the board. We covered the theory about him in the previous video, but it looks like a lot of people are beginning to think that he is behind all of this. So the belief is that Adam D'Angelo, so he is the CEO of Quora, and he recently, or I guess at the beginning of the year, put out something called Ho, which was last month also became you were able, if you built on Po, you were able to monetize it. And basically what Po is, is very similar to the Chad GPT store, the GPTs that you're able to sell and share in the revenue. So that whole idea that the board said that Sam Altman wasn't always candid in, in whatever he was telling the board. And a lot of people were saying that it was in fact the, the custom GPT announcement that brought the rift. Like we know those things to be true. A lot of different people have kind of confirmed that that was the case. So I guess high likelihood of it being true. But what this means is that Adam D'Angelo is potentially greatly affected by this. So Core is being attacked, Poe is being attacked, basically being copied. And it seemed like maybe potentially, you know, if Sam Altman didn't tell him about it, 
previously then announced this at the uh, at the OpenAI Developer Day. Maybe that was a sign to Adam D'Angelo that hey, he's going to try to take Sam Altman down. My question is, what? Why is he on the board of OpenAI in the first place? Who who is he? What? How? Why is he on that board? So, anyways, we don't know if that's the case or not. It does seem to make some sense that something like that would happen, but there's no credible proof yet. Also, for some reason, Ted decided to publish Ilya Sutskever's speech called The Exciting Perilous Journey Towards AGI. Today, out of all days, it's pretty recorded, I assume. I don't know when it was taped. Actually, it says record October 17th, 2023. They decided to uh, plop it down now. So before you go, let me play just a few highlights to give you an idea of what the speech was about. One interesting thing is that when this whole thing was starting out, Ilya Sutskever was very reserved, very quiet. He wasn't a very like outspoken person. And as a lot of this stuff was coming out, people were saying that in his recent few months at, at OpenAI, he became a little bit more of a more of a person that was trying to be in the spotlight a little bit, maybe. He bought an effigy and burnt it to symbolize unaligned AI. So like he bought like a little wooden statue, like a doll, called that doll. This is our this is unaligned AI. This is bad AI. And they set it on fire. He also would often say, Do you feel the AGI? He would make people chant feel the AGI, feel the AGI, that kind of like repetitive saying. And apparently he was also, also asking a lot of the people that were, they were hiring during interviews, if they indeed feel the AGI. Now, I don't know what to make of that. Is that made up story or not? But I got to say, this whole demeanor is very different in this recording than what it was from those recordings a year plus ago. So I'll play a few clips and I, well, I'm off to bed. It's been a long couple days. My name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching. You've all experienced the progress of artificial intelligence. It's not difficult to imagine that at some point in the future, our intelligent computers will become as smart or smarter than people. And it's also not difficult to imagine that when that happens, the impact of such artificial intelligence is going to be truly, truly vast. It's very easy to explain how artificial intelligence works. Just one sentence. Artificial intelligence is nothing but digital brains inside large computers. As researchers and engineers continue to work on AI, the day will come when the digital brains that live inside our computers will become as good and even better than our own biological brains. Computers will become smarter than us. We call such an AI an AGI, artificial general intelligence, when we can say that the level at which we can teach the AI to do anything that, for example, I can do or someone else. For every positive application of AGI, there will be a negative application as well. There are concerns around if an AGI ever becomes very, very powerful, which is possible. Maybe it will want to go rogue, being that it is an agent. So this is a concern that exists with this unprecedented, not yet existing technology. In addition to working with governments and helping them understand what is coming and prepare for it, we are also doing a lot of research on addressing the technological side of things so that the AI will never want to go rogue. And this is something which I'm working on as well. The idea that computers will become really intelligent and eventually more intelligent than us is becoming widespread. It used to be a niche idea that only a few enthusiasts and hobbyists and people who were very into AI were thinking about. But now everyone is thinking about it. And as AI continues to make progress, as technology continues to advance, as more and more people see what AI can do and where it is headed towards, then it will become clear just how dramatic, incredible, and almost fantastical AGI is going to be and how much trepidation is appropriate. And what I claim will happen is that people will start to act in uncollaborative way out of their own self-interest because we feel, we appreciate how incredibly dramatic AGI is going to be. And my claim is that with each generation of capability advancements, as AI gets better and as all of you experience what AI can do, as people who run AI efforts and AGI efforts and people who work on them will experience it as well. This will change the way we see AI and AGI, and that will change collective behavior. And this is an important reason why I'm hopeful that despite the great challenges that's posed by this technology, we will overcome them. Thank you.